Hello, hello, hello! For most of you, this is your first time actually hearing my voice, and I cannot tell you how glad I am to finally start adding some commentary to my videos. So this video won't be quite like my other content, but it will still cover Tycho, so don't worry. Think of this video as sort of a beginner's guide to Tycho, a learning video to help you improve your skills at the game we all know and love. Now, it's important to note many of you who are watching will be playing this on the drum controller. I, however, do not, as I prefer the button controls, specifically on the Joy-Cons. That being said, a lot of this video will be dedicated solely to strategy and not so much to gameplay, so you might still learn something of value. There are generally three things I tend to watch for when I am playing Taiko no Tatsujin for the Nintendo Switch. One, general sense of rhythm. Two, knowledge slash familiarity with note patterns. And three, level of hand-eye coordination. I'll go over each of these in detail in a little bit. However, there are two things I'd like to say before getting into these points. First, it is important to never give up. Taiku can be very easy, but it can also be very difficult, so don't feel bad if you aren't immediately able to full combo 10-star levels. With time and practice, anything is possible. Second, it is also important to note that one does not need to be an expert at a game to enjoy its contents. While I personally tend to find great reward in beating difficult levels, many who are watching may not, and there is no shame in that. Games should be played to one's own level of enjoyment, and don't let others tell you otherwise. All that out of the way, let's get in to the meat and potatoes of this great pot of Tycho Stew. Taking a look at the main menu, there are four primary options for play in Taiko no Tatsuji Nintendo Switch version. Taiko Mode, the main gameplay mode for the game, Donkats Fight, Online Battles, and the Party Game Mode. For this video, I'll mainly focus on Taiko Mode, as it is the primary gameplay mode for the game, and I do plan to make separate videos for these other three. So, let's jump into it. The first thing the game will ask you to do is to choose your character. Anyone playing this game for the first time will only have two characters available, Donchan and Katschan. <clears throat> Most of the others are unlockable via the party game mode, with the exceptions being these four characters here, Tonkachi, Mirai Kumachi, uh, Nekoko and Tomomo, and of course Hatsune Miku, who are available as part of DLC packages on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Many of these characters actually have unique skills that alter the way the game is played, so for simplicity, I'll stick with Donchan. After entering the mode and choosing your character, the game will prompt you to select a song. You'll also notice each song has four levels of difficulty. Well, some actually have five, but we'll get into that a little later. With a star rating representing the relative difficulty of each level. On the bottom, you can see a few options for what to do on this menu. Pressing the A button will confirm your choice of song. The Y button will add a song to your favorites list. Pressing the X button will select a random song to play. And pressing the plus or minus buttons will bring up a submenu. So this submenu actually allows you to filter the songs you want to play. So as you can see here, you can select which difficulty you'd like to play, easy, normal, hard, extreme, or just all of them. And you can sort them by genre or by star level, as well as by clear state. This last filter is, well, just like it says, favorites only. So if I switch this on, and I hit the A button to confirm. Now, the only songs that appear will be the ones that I've saved to my favorites list. Pressing A to confirm your selection prompts us with another menu, this time allowing us to select the level of difficulty for the song we're about to play, but that's not all. Pressing the plus or minus button here will generate yet another submenu, allowing us to actually alter the gameplay of the song as well as which instrument we'd like to play with. The instrument thing is pretty simple, it's basically just the sound effects of the notes that you play. But you can also edit the gameplay, such as the scoring mechanics, the speed of the song, the appearance of the notes, as well as engage the special modes, which again, I'll talk about a little more later. 
Going back to the difficulty menu, we also have the option to choose our control scheme. Also, I should mention these crowns next to each difficulty level, so these crowns represent your level of completion of this particular song. A blue crown means the song has been completed, a gold crown means the song has been full comboed, and an invisible crown, as you might imagine, means the song has not been attempted. Going into the control selection menu, we can see that there are three variations for the Joy-Con button controls, and one configuration for the drum controller. I personally go for configuration one, but feel free to test different control schemes to see what works best for you. And as you could kind of tell from the button control schemes, the gameplay is actually quite simple, only involving two notes. This means that the distinguishing factor between players will actually not involve their ability to memorize complicated control schemes, but is instead based on their ability to recognize patterns and press buttons accordingly, uh, in similar respect to many other rhythm games. Before we get into anything too complicated, I'd like to reiterate the points that I made before, <clears throat> specifically the traits that I tend to watch for when playing Taiko. Those being sense of rhythm, knowledge and familiarity with note patterns, and level of hand-eye coordination. The first one, the sense of rhythm, is something that I believe to be at the heart of all rhythm games, as without the ability to keep a beat or memorize a melody, it is very difficult to effectively approach a rhythm game. That being said, while playing rhythm games may help with one's sense of rhythm, there are a few other things, I believe, that may actually help improve this aspect a little more. Things like taking up an instrument, learning to beatbox, or even something as simple as listening to music more often can help improve one's understanding of rhythm and beat, and this will help you tremendously when playing games like Taiko. Number two, knowledge and familiarity with note patterns. Going back to my previous point of never giving up, knowledge and familiarity with the patterns in this game is something that can only be learned by playing. Some patterns may be easy to memorize, and some may be very difficult but there is no better teacher than experience when it comes to understanding the note combinations in Taiko. Moreover, I've noticed many people when playing Taiko for the first time will simply jump into a 7 or 8 star extreme level, something that can be easily overwhelming, especially if one hasn't played Taiko before. For absolute beginners, I would suggest going for normal mode, or in some cases hard mode, and working your, and working your way up from there. That way, you'll be introduced to the difficult patterns at a reasonable rate, and thus will be able to learn more from each attempt. The final point, level of hand-eye coordination. Simply speaking, without the ability to translate what your eyes perceive into action from your hands, playing a game like this will be exceptionally difficult. Essentially, this point just boils down to people who play a lot of video games will likely have an easier time adapting to harder levels. Some will have an easier time than others, but always remember, with enough time and patience, even struggling players can become great at Taiko. This is the default hand pattern I have found to be the most usable when it comes to normal gameplay in Taiko. As you can see from the image, my right hand mainly deals with red notes, right here. And my left hand mainly deals with blue notes. This simplifies the gameplay by quite a bit, as I don't really have to hit both note types with one hand. Um, moreover, the placement of the thumbs on these two buttons specifically allows for certain tacks to be performed more easily. So, two button rapids, I can simply roll my thumb across here or across here. The three button rapids are done by quickly alternating. The meat grinder, which is a technique of my own invention, simply spamming... Uh, four buttons in a row, sort of in a pattern like this. And of course, the record scratch drum roll, where I simply rotate my thumbs across the buttons very quickly. For the applications of these techniques, I would recommend watching some of my gameplay videos where I use these in some difficult levels. For the two to three button rapids, my videos on Silent Jealousy and Zen 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 Zen. For the meat grinder, my recent video on Touch Off and the record scratch drum roll in my ever popular video on Realize. Getting into the actual level design, there are a few things that are important to note. First, each of these little white lines represents the beginning or end of a measure. Timing your presses accordingly will often yield good results. 
Second, it's important to keep track of the beat somehow, maybe tapping your foot or making sounds with your mouth, because if you do lose the beat, it's almost certain that you'll miss a few notes. Just a few minor things to wrap up today's video. Uh, the fifth level of di difficulty I spoke of before, I'll see if I can find a song with it somewhere. Here we go. Is... The game calls it Ura Oni, I call it Super Extreme. Uh, it's kind of a weird mode, unlocked only by clearing the level itself on extreme difficulty, so you won't be able to play Super Extreme until you beat the extreme version. And also, the special modes uh, that I talked about before, so the special modes here, are also kind of weird. And I didn't talk about them before because I didn't think they were as important as the other stuff, so basically special is different gameplay modes, so auto makes the song play itself, so you don't actually play the song, the notes just hit themselves. Uh, Perfect ends the song on the first missed note, and Spartan will restart the song on the first missed note. These two are very different. So this one basically just immediately causes you to fail and ends the song and you go to the results screen. This one will just restart the song. So finally, to end things off, I think I'll put in a recording of me playing a song, some Namco original, I guess, using the techniques I demonstrated a little while ago. Alright, let's get started. Uh, too bad. Didn't get a new ice score this time. <laughs> 